welcome on behalf of uh, learning general surgery to this uh, second part of uh, the session uh, learning general surgery session titled uh, workplace harassment uh, and uh, the pleasure to have you all here and over to manjula thank you thank you so much sir let me just share my screen right i hope it's visible yeah visible right yes ma'am Good evening, everyone. Uh, happy Friendship Day. It's August 2nd today. Uh, I'd like to welcome you all to the second part of... Can you the, make it full screen? Uh, from my... Yes, sir. Yeah. Fine. Wonderful. So I'd, I'd like to welcome you all to the second part of uh, the discussion uh, on workplace harassment. And I know it's the fag end of the weekend and a controversial topic, but hopefully this is just like to shake things up and prepare you for... Uh, the weekend ahead. Uh, uh, so earlier today, someone actually asked me, why uh, are you discussing a topic like workplace harassment on an academic forum? And uh, I had only one thing to tell them that we have seen in the previous discussion, we have discussed last week how uh, the effects of workplace harassment, the, you know, the adverse effects that it has on the individual, his decision-making skills, it impacts his work, his interpersonal relationship, and ultimately interferes with patient care and also dents the organization, the productivity of the organization. So I can't think of a stronger need than this for us to recognize this issue, increase the awareness, and hopefully join hands to tackle this change. Uh, before I forget, before moving on, I would like to uh, extend my heartfelt gratitude to Dr. Radha Krishna, sir. Uh, first of all, for giving me this opportunity to speak on this forum, and secondly, for these wonderful posters. So I've been making them, you know, throughout the days leading up to today, and uh, they're just wonderful. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, moving on, I'd like to introduce my panelists for the day. Uh, a few changes uh, compared to uh, the last week. Uh, so again, in alphabetical order, Dr. Jaipriya Ramas. Consultant General Surgeon from Chennai with special interest in laparoscopy and GI surgery. We also have with us Dr. Jayashree Tolkar, uh, who's a general laparoscopic and bariatric surgeon, the founder of Indian Institute for Metabolic Sciences and JT Foundations. Madam is the convener of the Maharashtra State Obesity and Diabetes Task Force. Uh, Dr. Jayashree, ma'am, are you there with us? Have you joined? Okay. I, I think ma'am will join in a while. I am here. Yeah. Oh, good evening, ma'am. Good evening. Joining us today, Dr. Raja Shanmuga Krishna, who is a consultant oncoplastic breast surgeon and plastic surgeon from Ganga Hospital, Coimbatore. After his post-graduation in plastic surgery, so went on to specialize in a few areas of his interest, such as oncoplastic breast surgery, burns, and cosmetic surgery in the UK and US. Uh, he's uh, he has multiple awards, publications, and book chapters to his credit. Dr. Rajesh Balal uh, serves as former HOD and professor in general surgery at KS Hegri Medical Academy, Mangalore. So has been invited as the faculty for the teaching program at the state chapter of the ASI and is the guest faculty at the SRMC annual rapid review course in 2018. Joining us this week, we also have Lieutenant General Dr. V. Ravi Shankar, Sir is a consultant, cardiovascular surgeon, and CEO of Leelavati Hospital in Mumbai. He served in the Indian Armed Forces Medical Services for 38 years, and having risen to the highest three-star general rank, he has been awarded the Vishish Seva Medal by the President of India for his meritorious services of exceptional order to the nation. Uh, Dr. Sangeeta Shankar Narayanan is a consultant psychiatrist at Sims Hospital, Chennai. Uh, Madam joins us again this week. Uh, she uh, completed her psychiatric training in the UK after completing MD medicine in India. And she also has done her MBA from the Lancaster University, UK. So I would like to take this opportunity to welcome you all. And thank you so much for taking time out for this discussion today evening. So we will begin this session with a poll. Uh, I have 10 questions. And all these questions pertain to whether uh, the given scenario qualifies as harassment or not in the workplace. 
uh, and the uh, uh, we'd like to involve the audience as well in this. Uh, sir, Dr. Radha Krishna, uh, Pata sir, can we? Uh... Uh, yeah, Madhur, can. Yeah. So, uh, sir, we're ready for the poll, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, I will display the question and uh, everyone will be given uh, 10 to 15 seconds to vote and then we will discuss each scenario. Uh, right. Okay, uh, so if you're all ready. Okay, uh, the first scenario, there's a lady doctor who is in a romantic relationship with her boss when suddenly the relationship sours. Now, following this, she finds herself being blamed by him for minor mishaps, held accountable for the tiniest of errors, her responsibilities withdrawn or handed over to someone else. And then she's also overlooked or excluded from departing, uh, department meetings and events. Would you call this sexual harassment? No. Where do we vote? Uh, that's what even I'm wondering. Uh, sir, doc? Yeah, I'm... Uh... Can you see the, there's a poll section. I don't know whether you can see it. Um, okay, I'm going to launch it. All right, sir. Okay, great. You'll great. get it now. Yes. 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 Uh, sir, can we also have a third option uh, saying maybe, if possible, for the next few questions? Next person, yes, I'll. All right. Uh, so until we get the results, I would uh, like to is, is, uh, 14 or 77 percent voted. I think another 15. Uh, yeah, just another five seconds. I'll put up the list. Sir. All right. Uh, I would just uh, like to ask Dr. Jayashi Thodkar at this juncture. Okay. Uh, can you see the results? No. Mm, no. Oh yes, yes. yes. Right, so 38% of the, 38% uh, have voted no. They, they don't think this is sexual harassment. Uh, the rest have said yes, majority have said yes. Dr. Jayashi Todkar, may I ask you what your opinion is? Would you call this sexual harassment? Dr. Jayashi, madam? Uh, yes, can you hear me now? Yes, ma'am, yes, yes. No, I will not call this as a sexual harassment okay. because in in case of the exchange of the seats even if the boss is the woman and the man is the second person yes. okay still this is just interpersonal things it may not be called as sexual harassment at all in my opinion okay all right um, uh, this may not continue after some days this can be just a reaction in the beginning all right. Ma'am, what if it does continue for an extended period, say uh, six months? Then would you call this sexual harassment? Uh, still, I won't call it as a sexual harassment. It can be just an interpersonal trouble. But if it changes its behavior in terms of many others teasing her okay, or him, then typically inducing bad behavior by the multiple thing, multiple places and basically causing discomfort to that person uh, which gives a very bad negative feeling. I think any two bosses or uh, any uh, two people who are in relation as a boss and the subordinate right. whether right. both are male or both are female or one is male or one is female this right. will be called as an interpersonal thing. Okay. So I would like to ask Dr. Ravi Shankar, sir, uh, would you call this sexual harassment? Yes, I would call it uh, uh, sexual harassment. I think personal and professional life should be totally segregated. They don't mix. They it don't. ruins the credibility of the victim also. Yes. And one would start thinking, did the victim try all this for her career advancement? Now it has gone sour. What happens to her future? And I think uh, it finally lands up in harming her by blaming her or neglecting her. So definitely it is a harassment. All right. 
all right so i would like to ask you have you come across a situation such as this uh, uh, during your career have you had to deal with something like this wherein you've had to someone has complained about it to you uh, this situation has not come as i uh, you said i was 38 years in the army and we don't face such situations there because uh, if any such thing crops up it is just court of inquiry court martial and it ends there now ever since the uh, sexual harassment act came there were a lot of issues they thought why is the army not involved in it till uh, brinda karat went to the court and then the court said no it is for everybody but even now i suspect in the armed forces we don't have such a committee in every institution because our rules and regulations are different having said that in 5 years that i have been in nilavati hospital there have been cases of sexual harassment but not this kind where there is a relationship which has gone sour and now the victim is blaming the perpetrator right right so before i just go on to i have this slide where i would like to tell you what uh, we uh, consider under sexual uh, what we consider sexual harassment or the law co uh, considers sexual harassment before that i would like to call up for dr rajesh balal uh, sir i would like to know your opinion would you call this situation sexual harassment i actually voted no okay because uh, to put it very simply i think it takes two hands to clap when um, uh, you know when uh, like the two my two previous panelists pointed out right you must keep your professional and your private life separately the minute you try and club these things then you have problems okay as itself some bosses are difficult to deal with and you know to get a personal angle into that and then say i was harassed is probably not okay so i'm not agreeing i don't think I, uh, this is actually very interesting because of all the questions that i had put up i thought this was the most obvious one wherein i was under the impression that you know there would be at least 90% who who would call this sexual harassment Uh, so this is actually very interesting uh, at the beginning itself, and I would just I you know this say something, Manjula. Yes, yes, uh, JP. Can you show me the slide of that incident? Yeah. See, um, first of all, it is not a very simple case. Okay, there are many layers to it. True. Okay? Hmm. Now we have a complainant who is saying I was harassed by so and so. It is a very obvious case of sexual harassment if it is proven to be true. Okay. So what the, the 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 slide you're showing now could prove yes. there is this for that. So you did me. Yes. Uh, we were in relationship. We were happy. Now, so for some reason, it's become sour, and it's affecting our workplace. And because of this becoming sour, I start treating you differently. Uh, means it's a kind of harassment. Correct. Number one. Exactly. So right. and then uh, if she is able to prove she has enough evidence to say that this happened this meeting i was neglected this responsibility was you know what was before and what is she is able to say with the date and the time and enough evidence and uh, you know able to prove herself this indeed is harassment yeah so as per uh, what dr japriya has said is absolutely right so of course perceptions are one thing um uh, you know definitely you know it uh, personal and professional ideally should never be mixed but once that once that has happened and then the relationship starts souring so by law in case the for example if the boss has been a male or even a woman but then they use their hierarchical uh, position to withhold responsibilities withhold promotions uh, from the affected individual from the person that they have broken up with then that indeed is grounds to claim that the victim whoever it is man or woman is being sexually harassed uh i'm going to move to the next question uh so miss x is a pg student she is scrubbed as a second assistant in a major case in the ot with her senior male consultants now the male colleagues crack an adult joke amongst themselves and they all break into raucous laughter and slyly glance at her while doing so so she's not included in the joke but she is checking for her reaction and they are having a great time this is in the ot so now is this harassment so can we have the voting uh, panel please or is it visible to you all no uh polling yeah um uh, 
can you all see the polling uh, window? No, 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 no. Uh, sir, Dr. Radha Krishna, if yeah. I may request you. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just. Sorry, I'll just... sir. Okay. Mm. Yes, no, and maybe option, sir, please. Yes, no, yeah. Yes, no is there at the moment. Forget it. All right. Uh, no, no. Some more time. So another 10 seconds? Yeah, and I think another two seconds because uh, the maybe doesn't really mean anything. We are no, giving an option to people to sit on the fence. Don't. <laughs> yes, sir. And <laughs> most of the questions we'll end up sitting on the fence in this case. I agree, sir. No problem. Yes and no should be good enough. We must take a call. Right. Uh, okay, I'm ending the polling. You can share the results. Okay. I'll share the results. So, majority again have said this does amount to sexual harassment. We have 59%, but there is an almost equal number who claim that this is not harassment. I would like to ask Dr. Raja. Uh, sir, what no, no, no. do you think? I would say it is an indecent, it is not decent, but I don't think it is uh, sexual harassment because I don't think they are talking about that person, isn't it? I think probably they're cracking amongst each other. Uh, it, it, but, but I would say it is indecent. I don't think it should be done. But I know whether they are harassing that girl or so, but if they are uh, doing it uh, repeatedly and then if they're looking at her, I think then probably could be. But in the, somewhere, this is somewhere a thin line, probably one or two, somewhere uh, one or two here and there is okay, but probably if it is going on regularly, then it is harassment. Right. All right. Uh, Dr. Jepria? JP? Yes. Yeah. Well, okay. I'd like your opinion. See, this is, uh, again, if you look at the definition of sexual harassment, okay, there is, we, we are, you not mentioned what adult joke and what was cracked, okay, how indecent it was, okay, there's something that made this lady uncomfortable there, so she's, in the, she's, she's doing her profession, she's doing her job, she's a PG, she's there to learn, and then during the course of her learning, this is making her uncomfortable, so I, I would say this is harassment. If women is done once, it is harassment. All right. Uh, Dr. Sangeeta, I'd like your opinion, please. Dr. Sangeeta? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Perfect. So for me, it was a straightforward no, uh, purely because, um, yeah, I don't know, you know, I think uh, we need to be very clear on how we define harassment. As as we discussed in the part one of our session, uh, just being uncomfortable or just not liking it definitely cannot be uh, used as to define something as serious as harassment. Now, one could say that actually this could be a bit of a discrimination where uh, a joke is being shared and uh, the joke is such that where the female colleague cannot be included uh, part of the joke. Now, um, the PG might very well be offended that the joke is such that, that she can't be or she's not been included part of the joke. At the end of the day, everybody is an adult. So they might feel that, why haven't you included me? You have kind of discriminated me. You have assumed that because I'm a female, I might be uncomfortable and therefore I'm not included. Or she might be uncomfortable because it is an adult joke and maybe this is a woman who doesn't like this kind of thing. So it is more, um, I, I'm kind of not very sure whether I would call it harassment, but maybe discrimination. And as I think one of the speakers said, Maybe an inappropriate and um, a kind of, uh, you know, a conversation in the middle of tea. Yes, yes. I, um, I actually agree with all of you. I think uh, um, it's yes as well as no. So there's one of, uh, somebody in the audience, Dr. Amulia has uh, mentioned, uh, she's commented, are we suggesting that adult jokes cannot be cracked in front of a woman unless she was included in the joke? It's not. So uh, my takeaway from this whole thing, uh, when I've been doing, yeah, yeah. One more perspective, you would allow me to share a slide please, on what constitutes uh, sexual harassment. I'm just going to stop sharing J uh, JP and you can just share your screen. Yeah, done. No.
you have, uh, you can see the share screen button. Yes, it's yes, right yes. below, uh, below the screen at the center. I did that. Um, okay. uh, you open your PowerPoint in your computer. So then that, you <laughs> will see the screen okay. and double click the PowerPoint. Yeah. You can see it in the share screen, the PowerPoint presentation. So just that I'm allowing the privacy settings to, you know, say that this is okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, while JP gets the screen online, uh, I'd also, I'd like to make a point, especially with regard uh, to... Manjula, uh, yes, see, uh, see th this is the least of concerns of uh, cracking jokes and there are thousand things which are very, very serious. Uh, you know, this is the way, I mean, if uh, uh, it will keep happening every day, all the time, and that is the language surgeons speak. Uh, they don't I, intend I to agree. say anything bad to anybody. Okay, I, now, I completely uh, agree, sir. But um, uh, I, I think, think exception to the fact that she, he said, that is the language surgeons speak. I'm not agreeing, sir. I'm not agreeing. Sir, uh, <laughs> My slide is not displaying, but I can just read out. This yeah. is yeah. from the Ministry of, uh, you know, uh, the government uh, for the welfare of women and children. And uh, this is from the Vishaka, Vishaka Act. Uh, yeah. This is a slide. I, you can't see, but I'm going to read it out to you. Yeah. Work, workplace sexual harassment is behavior that is, number one, unwelcome. Number two, sexual in nature. Number three, a subjective experience and number four it is the impact and not the intent is what matters so mm. so when we say unwelcome so what is unwelcome sexual conduct so again this definition is from and the, again from the same uh, government website which describes that and you can look for it in the resources of the same website I'm going to share the website soon so what is unwelcome unwelcome sexual conduct a word gesture or act which is unwelcome to the woman who is in receipt of such behavior so this woman who is in receipt may not be the direct you know target she could be a bystander a, a witness to what is happening so so this is what is unwelcome so what is subjective okay now again you can't see this slide this is from the delhi high court in 2010 it endorsed the view that Sexual harassment is a subjective experience. Okay, so this is the background that many men, they, uh, they consider uh, they, uh, a conduct which may be unobjectionable. They think it's unobjectionable towards a woman, but may, it may in fact affect the many women. So they think it's just a harmless amusement. It's just a, you know, a small, this thing. But if the woman perceives that, to you know harass her she feels she's not comfortable it's so the subject is a subjective experience okay it's upon the lady who's experiencing this so so it's unwelcome it's subjective and number three um, sexual everybody knows it is the intent and not it is not the intent but the impact is had it has on the lady so in a court of law when you say when a man says i didn't mean anything by it by saying that in defense of whatever behavior he has done, it is not going to stand good, okay? So according to law, it is the impact of the behavior, not the intent that matters with regards to sexual harassment. So in a court of law, if this person was cracking a joke and made her uncle and she's escalated to the level it goes to court, it generally shouldn't, then you, you, you can't plead, you can't say I'm not at fault because the law is uh, tilted towards the safety and security of women and this is what it has to say so this is, is what my explanation of the issue does not to say that you can't crack jokes or you know you can't behave like this it's just adult behavior i mean it is not about that if that particular lady is not feeling comfortable in the workplace because of this joke she has a right to complain about it full stop um, i think uh, i'd like to add something Yes, I think a, a lot of men actually think this is to be normal and sometimes they crack jokes and sometimes they, and when they crack jokes something may just turn out to be a little slightly towards the adult side as well and I think probably uh, men, many men don't perceive this as uh, as wrong I think yeah. that is that is one thing so probably uh, what could happen is uh, later if the lady who's assisting or something 
she goes and after the case and says sir i was not happy with what you spoke please don't tell this i think it will be a great service for the male surgeon because many times they won't even know that they are doing wrong correct correct I a think- lot of surgeons don't even know that this is wrong itself because they consider this very normal correct. and so probably if the lady surgeon could go and tell them sir what it told i don't like it Correct. and then probably i think I, I mean, then that it, it will stick into their mind oh, oh, oh this is probably not something that we should do and right. probably many of them it's not that many of them would do it uh, really, really to uh, to harm that girl or to speak bad about that girl probably they just don't know i think a lot so of them just don't know i would like to add to what dr raja has to say uh, what you said was fantastic but from also a woman's perspective Uh, i think cracking we are all adults cracking adult jokes is absolutely normal but what we don't realize is that there are a lot of women uh, people come from different backgrounds man or woman whoever it is and there may be a few who are not comfortable with you know cracking such jokes openly and suppose they are in a you know in an ot where you know they've just joined the institution and then suddenly you know they see their colleagues speaking like this they might be taken aback so the i think uh, i think what we need to keep in mind here is probably sensitivity so we're not saying that uh, you know it's completely wrong to crack adult jokes or definitely not but i think we must be aware and cognizant of whom we are surrounded by and how, how they uh, perceive the you know how they might perceive whatever is going on and as for a, a student or someone you know going up to the professor or her senior and telling them that you know i found that uncomfortable it it's great if we can actually have that kind of conversation going but unfortunately it's not very easy most of the time for someone to go up to a senior and you know tell them there's so many other things they're not they're not able to bring up so that is the only issue uh, with that dr manjula yes sir dr ravi the operation theater uh, we tend to lighten the mood and you know reduce the tension by having music in one corner Yes. Uh, we keep talking to the anesthetist and to the juniors. Often on such jokes, we do crack. Maybe we should ask the um, lady doctor if uh, she's going to be comfortable. We are going to say something, and within limits, she, you have to actually specify what is the joke. There are a lot of within limits. It really doesn't matter. So Correct. I would not consider it as a harassment. Correct. I um, I take your point, sir. Uh, the the only thing is we must be aware that these are situations that all of us think many of us think it's normal even i thought it was normal but it's only once i started you know researching for this discussion i realized that you know these are grounds wherein someone can actually report us mm-hmm. for harassment so um i think it's just about awareness so i'm just going to go on to the next question uh so the scenario is a hospital coffee shop and there are two doctors who are catching up over a cup of after completion of rounds so they discuss and at that time when they're chatting they discuss you know the lascivious details of another colleague's love life in her absence can these gentlemen be held account or not not just gentlemen let me put it this way two colleagues male or female can they be held accountable for harassment uh the poll sir yes another 5 seconds and then we'll um we can uh, go ahead with the discussion i'd like to bring in dr sangeeta for this dr sangeeta could you please uh, uh, tell us what you think of this situation so this is where two two gentlemen are discussing or uh, two people excuse me are j- discussing somebody else's uh, love life sex life whatever it is and that person is not present so do you think they can be held accountable for harassment uh i I'll let me just announce the poll results as well majority have said no uh, because uh, majority have said no let me just put it at that so this scenario is one where people are basically gossiping about a colleague dr sangeeta uh, are you there yeah i am um, i'm just kind of wondering um, i actually said no Uh, purely because uh, this looked as you rightly pointed out the term i thought which came to my mind was gossip uh, where two individuals are gossiping about another colleague who is not there to defend herself and often gossip happens behind people's back 
and um, unfortunately it is a gossip which you know kind of uh, sets the culture and the tone of the organization but often gossip is quite difficult to give a name you know you can't kind of label it and say okay the gossip started at this place and these two people can be held accountable for harassment because it's quite tricky how do you find out where it's going to start yeah. and again the question is you know um, as human beings we do sit and talk about people and then you again get to into this area of how what do you say is normal what do you say is uh, abnormal what is uh, uh, you know what should be done should not be done so now we are talking about kind of what is appropriate behavior um in um in our medical profession do we sanitize this profession totally to the extent that we are only very formal in our conversations or or how do you kind of even control these things you know can you label them as harassment and because if you label it how are you ever going to kind of you know take uh, the proceeding how is it going to go ahead how are you going to bring the person to account because it's going to be quite challenging right all right so uh, uh dr rajesh balal sir i also voted no i think it's ethically wrong but i'm not sure it is harassment um i agree with the, what dr sangeeta said also right there are a lot of gray areas yes but i'm not sure that this uh, this uh, um, correlates as uh, harassment right so you know, just to take it from the previous question if the person comes to know is it okay if that person comes and says look here guys this is my life don't talk about this is that okay you know the previous uh, question we said uh, you can crack jokes and then uh, tell the lady i'm sorry and that everything is forgiven can we have the same thing for this also we can so do what in fact that can be done for every situation correct uh, i think i think the question comes up when you know maybe the man or woman is not in a position to do that dr jayashri todkar uh, may i have your opinion in uh, this scenario please yes i think if people are discussing somebody else's private life mm -hmm. as a bystander i don't think we should feel any harassment because people who are talking are showing their own characters and it's none of our business when they are talking any shit all right i would actually like to uh, so my answer to this uh, actually my answers are all biased now because i have uh, been reading up about this so if given this situation i would have said no this is just gossip and we all do it however um, gossip in this case i mean you're obviously talking about somebody else you're literally dissecting their character i've used the word conjectured we don't know what's happening we're only talking about it in case the person gets to know about it in in case it affects his or her mental status and then it actually becomes grounds for it being called a hostile work environment in that case if that person whoever he or she may be if they know who is responsible or where this is sourced from we must be aware that we can be held responsible for being the source of uh, you know, for being the source of this hostility so we can be reported i will not call this sexual harassment uh, but we can be reported for harassment um, i had a uh, so i i really i had a doubt about this and amongst the audience a very good friend of mine uh, rajat shrivastav so rajat is a lawyer i he's on the uh, he's in the audience right now so uh, dr pata if you give me permission can i ask rajat to just say a few words about this because i had a doubt as well yeah sure sure but he uh, can rajat, unmute and comment unmute camera yeah. on uh, hi hi camera everyone on. uh so just a brief introduction rajat is a very close friend of mine and he's a lawyer he's a corporate lawyer am i right rajat that's correct thanks thanks for the introduction manjula yeah okay so uh regarding this situation see my view was actually no that this should not amount to sexual harassment but yes it could have gone either ways because a few factors to consider here is that person wasn't available uh you know it may or may not reach her you know again i mean where the discussion was taking place was an extended uh, i mean extension of workplace that i agree but again this was rather remote possibility or a remote source of uh, any discussion being happening about the person itself so again uh, like i said it it depends on case to case in this case my view was rather a no because of the 
uh, remoteness of the event, which may or may not have led to any kind of sexual harassment. Of course, this is an unethical behavior, and in all such cases, uh, you know, it should be kept in mind what is uh, what may or may not impact the psychology of the person about whom these talks have been happening. So, at the time of occurrence of the event, it may not have been sexual harassment per se. However, in due course of time, this may turn out to be. And if the inquiry is led out, and uh, you know the right questions are asked to the perpetrators, it may uh, it may be held that yes, this did uh, amount to creating hostile work environment for that person. So that's what it is. I mean, it may have been uh, harassment, not necessarily sexual harassment at the time of occurrence of the event. Right. Thank you. Thank you can so I, much. Can yes? I just say a word? Yes, sir. See, I feel it is. I've said yes because I feel it's an indirect harassment. Now, you are uh, tarnishing a colleague's image and rumors spread very fast. And then what happens? People start judging her professional uh, front vis-a-vis um, -vis her personal life. So it is an indirect harassment. That's what I think. Right. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. Can, for I, that. can I just yes. ask you the, uh, a question related to the previous? Yes. Uh, uh, sir, very said uh, OT behavior, um, as long as the jokes don't go above a particular level, it's okay. Does the reverse hold good? In that, uh, if you are the boss, if I'm the boss, let's say, who's cracking dirty jokes every, every time, adult jokes, so-called. You know, uh, Dr. JP mentioned decent adult jokes. I don't know whether there are indecent, decent adult jokes, that's different. But if I keep on cracking adult jokes in the theater, what image do you give to your junior? He or she, when she scrubs in, isn't that also the is important, sir? Isn't that related? This, to this question? Repetitive uh, such actions are certainly amounts to bullying rather than harassment. Harassment is probably one or two episodes. When you do it repeatedly and in a subtle way, it becomes uh, bullying. Certainly, I mean, it's what she said was a incident. She didn't say it is happening every day or every time the boss is coming to the theater and cracking other jokes. Certainly, that is harassment. Right. Uh, so, I, raised with regard to uh, also the way probably etiquette I think etiquette also comes in in this discussion uh, so it's it's worth considering yes Dr. Jashri yeah I just have to say one thing when people are cracking these kind of jokes maybe often or maybe incidentally it is their social behavior which is shown in that it may not be particularly with reference to a certain person's presence there. Right. So that is a generalized that's what even uh, Dr. Rajesh Balal was also saying in case, I mean, that's, that's where etiquette, again, it's a discussion on etiquette that comes into the picture. Mm -hmm. And same thing with uh, gossiping as well. We've all been told that, you know, gossiping is something that we must all not in indulge in. But, well, we're humans. <laughs> it, it happens. So, uh, be... But this is just for awareness so that everyone knows that these, these are things that can come back to bite us uh, at a later date. Uh, I'm going to move to question number four. Uh, a male surgeon is assisting or supervising a female surgeon who's doing a scrotal dressing. And as she handles the scrotum, he comments very snidely. Be careful, madam. Handle with love and care. Is this sexual harassment? Uh, sir, the poll, please. Uh, another 10 seconds and then maybe we can wrap it up uh, just in the interest of time. A majority, 72% have said that yes, this is sexual harassment. Uh, I'd like to bring in uh, Dr. Um, uh, Raja Shanmuga Krishnan here. So, do you think, uh, what was your opinion? How have you voted and... Dr. Raja, uh, are you with us, sir? Uh, yeah, he's there, he's there. Okay. Uh, so, uh, until he comes online, I think maybe there's a network issue. Uh, Dr. Raja? All right, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, uh, would you would you call this sexual harassment? Dr. Sangeeta, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. 
see again how um, the female is, uh, how she finds it, how does she take it? And I think for me, all these questions raise a very big important issue is whether the female feels empowered or strong enough to say, I don't like it. You see, if somebody is able to do that, I would say it may not be sexual harassment because if they say, look, whatever you, the way you're talking is complete nonsense, don't do it, I don't like it, and they put an end to it. I think it's perfectly, I would say it is not sexual harassment. So on the other hand, if this is not a one-off thing, it's happened regularly and the female uh, surgeon has, you know, obtained number of times has said that she doesn't like it. And despite that, it keeps happening and she's not able to defend herself. Yes, may I say it is probably sexual harassment. So for me, all the questions that you have really actually spoken or discussed till now, for me, the bigger issue is how empowered are the female surgeons working in an environment where it is predominantly to this day a male dominated uh, speciality. And, and maybe these two things uh, do link in where I think our first presentation did say that sexual harassment is more likely to happen where somebody is in the minority. So kind of these are the questions which come up in my mind. And to answer your question probably depends. This is where I would leave it. Right. So um, there, there are comments from the audience. Uh, Dr. Jayanti says, bottom line, ultimately attitude of the individual. I agree with Dr. Sangeeta. And there's a Dr. Vaishnavi who says, doesn't the fact that the woman is speaking up against it prove that it was harassment in the first place? <laughs> And interestingly, there's a Galaxy Note 8. I'm not sure who that is, but uh, he or she uh, says that if done repeatedly, it amounts to sexual harassment. Yeah, and uh, all three of you, um, all three of you are right. So this is, it falls in the gray zone. I would agree with you. It actually depends on the attitude of whoever is doing the dressing, also the relationship between the two. Are they on very friendly terms? Are they comfortable having this kind of conversation? Now, if she is not comfortable with that com comment, A, um, it would be ideal if she could speak up and tell the, uh, the respective person that, look, I'm not comfortable with you passing comments like this. Please walk out. It's not all, it's easier said than done. It's not, it's not easy uh, to speak up in that manner because no matter how empowered you are, at least I remember when I was doing my post-graduation, uh, we were like, we weren't allowed to like talk against our seniors. So we wouldn't like, we would hesitate to speak up, right? And if done repeatedly, it amounts to sexual harassment, yes. Dr. Malti, yes. Uh, and that's also true. So any of these actions that we've actually discussed, if it's pervasive, if it's repeated, and it creates a hostile work environment, then definitely it's harassment. In this case, it'll be sexual harassment. No. And Dr. Amulia also says it's not easy to speak up, especially about such things. I'm going to move to the next question. A female PG walks into the ward one evening for her rounds. Her senior, the, the, uh, this is repeated from the previous week, uh, last of them, okay, uh, last few of them. So her senior PG, who's a male perched by the nursing counter, looks at her and gushes. What is that perfume you're wearing? You smell so seductive. So can the senior PG be reported for harassment? Uh, we have Dr. Raja here with us. So I, uh, you missed the last oh. question. Uh, I'm sorry, I go over here now. Now and then outside in second, no problem, people come no to problem, tell me something. Uh, can I have your opinion on this? Until we get the poll results, I'd like your opinion on this. Do you think this, uh, would you say this is harassment? I think I would say this is a harassment because uh, this is strictly a double meaning. This, this thing is very double meaning. And uh, it's just, a, you just want to give a hint saying that if you're going to take the bite, are you coming to me or not? It's, it's a sort of a double-ended meaning. I would definitely think this is a harassment and I think this should be done. All right. So a majority um, of the audience has agreed with us. 87% of them have said it's a straightforward harassment. I would, anyone on the panel, uh, have you voted no? Uh, not for judgment, just want an opinion. Do you, why do you say this is not harassment? Anyone from the panel? Well, uh, I said no. Uh, I'm sorry, who, who said no? It's me, uh, Dr. Sangeeta, who said no. Uh, yeah, yeah. Again, yeah. I think I suppose I'm, I'm the person who keeps saying no. But again, for me, it depends on... Um, 
like if it is it the the word seductive which is causing offense here what if the person had said you smell nice would that would that have made a difference and again how is the uh, pg really reacting to it you see um if does the pg like this you know um, uh, if this is a pg who is you know kind of a kind of whatever is going something is going on in the background and he happens to say this and then she says okay this this she might find that it is appropriate or if is this pg finding it inappropriate what did she do about it so see for me um these questions unfortunately for me don't i can't just say yes or no for me it's always it depends based on just one of this the word seductive uh, would i call it harassment probably it depends on a lot of things right so a uh, majority of them have said that this is sexual harassment uh, this is uh, this is uh, this is not a scenario that are formulated so it is actually happened so let me tell you i think it depends on how the so this does not mean that a man or a woman can never comment you know on somebody's perfume or that they're smelling good but i think it really depends on the manner in which it is said uh, if you're a perfume aficionado you want to know what perfume that person's wearing you can just say oh you're smelling good what perfume is that and but this you know uh saying that you smell so seductive uh it's the ward it's where you work you've come to see your patients i think that amounts to sexual harassment it's again ambiguous uh i think it depends on how that person uh was made to feel but then again the person the perpetrator or you know let's just say the pg he can be reported he can be reported for harassment uh i'm moving to question number 6 anjana in this context i must lighten this up a little bit you said what perfume are you wearing that is a very favorite opening line for many of my colleagues you see right <laughs> that was a starting uh, this one for many we were hoping many more things would happen just to lighten the mood a little bit <laughs> uh i i don't deny that uh, anyway uh, question number 6 so you are washed up in surgery with a couple of senior consultants who are in a romantic relationship with each other and uh, their on table banter between themselves uh, seems very personal and very unprofessional to you and you are discomforted by the same are there grounds for you to report this under harassment no none of my business Sixty-seven percent, a majority have said no. These are not grounds for you to report this as harassment, uh, Doctor uh, JP. Would you uh, would you say that there are grounds for us to report this under harassment? See again, coming back to any of these scenarios, it it is about how this person who's a victim or the complainant feels. it is not about the comment it is not about the behavior of that person so the behavior is different if this person feels uncomfortable in the workplace because of this okay she can it's a very subjective feeling he or she they can they can uh, go ahead and report it there's no harm in reporting i mean they, 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 nobody uh, uh, there's an internal complaints committee to report to and this person can very well go and report saying they these two people in a romantic relationship they are disturbing my workspace you know they are harassing i feel it's harassment i'm not comfortable she is entitled to say that uh, yeah but then it all depends on her and then again in the like what dr sangeeta said she doesn't like it she can say hey uh, you know tell them straight away and say this is not how you behave i'm not comfortable okay and again right okay. the majority of the scenarios you you're sharing here um even if it goes to the com internal complaints committee most of these can be conciliated by uh, you know a mutual discussion and uh, so yeah right uh dr uh, dr ravi shankar so i would like to ask you uh, do you think there are grounds for this to be reported under harassment i think discussing personal life in front of others can be quite discomforting for anybody but as again you know if it is a one off incident uh, i won't take it as uh, sexual harassment it's not a sexual harassment anyway 
it is just a harassment Harris. because we are discussing their personal issues in front of a third or fourth person even the anesthetist can crib actually why can't the anesthetist also say that uh, uh, it is harassment because he or she is also standing there so it, these, these are all very gray areas it's very difficult to say yes or no yes so i would like to ask you uh, at leelavati is there a is there an institute policy on workplace romance is there a policy that the institute has we have we have the internal complaints committee and the sexual harassment committee we we tried people but we don't have what you're saying is something which uh, like an institute policy on workplace romance like for example certain at least in the corporate sector there are certain institutes which uh, have no problem with people working in the same institution or uh, being in a relationship with each other because some people think it actually improves productivity or you know Uh, their ability to come up with uh, ideas uh, some some institutions say no that you know workplace romance will not be um, uh, encouraged some people have some uh, institutions have a disclosure policy so if two people at work uh, get into a relationship with each other they have to inform the hr or inform whoever uh, is in that committee that yes we are in a relationship so there be certain things that are told to them to ensure that you know work does not get inter uh, interfered with so i just i want to understand that do we ha do we have this kind of policy in the health sector at least in dilavati there is no policy but i do know students who passed through and they have got married also there are some junior consultants who got married and we don't uh, interfere in that at all so long as it doesn't affect the professional work and the hospital reputation all right uh okay dr uh, raja i would like to ask you uh, your perception is workplace romance is it wrong <coughs> i don't think it is wrong because uh, basically when you 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 are working with a with a person and then you find that you you like that person and then find you marry him i think it, it is not wrong for for that instance if you're going to see a lot of medical graduates they see each other in the in the classroom so then they get married i mean if can you say that as a wrong i mean we can say that as wrong but having said that i mean um, um but if you are using that as a means in which if, if things get sore and just like the first example that you told if things do get uh, sore between the two later on and then they bitch and bitch against each other then i think there is a problem i think we had one situation like this mm. in our hospital mm. where there was a consultant who who was married actually Okay. and then there was one the one guest relation officer was much younger mm. and then they had an affair and of course they had an affair outside the hospital and then things got very wrong and then things got very wrong each one put a, a complaint against each other and then when it came down to this thing then we told that even though it is outside the hospital right we told that the consultant has to quit and then the we made the consultant uh, quit because we felt that we wanted to tell everyone that because in a hospital there are a lot of women and women should should feel that that the hospital is a safe place to work and we told that the the hospital the, the man should quit and later on the day the girl also quit i mean it just happens i mean uh, things aren't on the in wraps that uh, that too often so it just works so both them quit Okay. So I think that's the way we keep it. But but there are really a lot of instances where a lot of our nurses have uh, have married, married, a physiotherapist have married, doctors have married. But then we are all fine with it. Okay. So. But Dr. Manjula, uh, you are saying that some uh, institutes uh, have this policy of in hospital romance. I really don't know yes, which. Yes. So the there are uh, various institutes, there are various corporations which actually have like an institutional policy. and a code of conduct when it comes to workplace romance some of some institutions don't allow it at all some institutions uh, allow um, allow it because they actually think it increases productivity and this is from literature that i've actually got yeah, i think that is that holds true for corporate offices i don't think it holds true for the scenario uh, the kind of institutions where we work i'm not too sure so, uh, what uh, what uh, so what literature says is that uh the indian healthcare sector they actually say that this is a deficiency they need to have these formulations to which will help us take a decision when it comes to such complaints of harassment of any uh, kind uh, dr rajesh balal sir you wanted to comment yeah i wanted a little digression because dr raja spoke about uh, what raja spoke about is not workplace romance strictly because that i think falls under the ambit of uh, extramarital 
that's a whole uh, different cup of tea altogether it's extra marital but it's also workplace romance because uh, two people working in the same institution have gotten have are in a relationship uh, okay. of course and, the gentleman it is an extra marital both affair previous, both the previous people have uh, sort of uh, agreed that workplace romance is always end in marriage it does not it does not it does so, not it does not so that oh, is oh. that is actually it one of the major different. drawbacks that uh, sort of uh, one must keep in mind for example if the relationship goes sour then True. that can result in a lot that That's can actually then result in sexual harassment the first uh, yeah. you know question that okay. we had discussed uh, right so uh, the seventh question i know a lot of people are going to tell me that this is very ambiguous and this is not so i'm just going to put it out there say you fat shame a colleague at work can you be reported for harassment yes. I would have thought this is the least ambiguous of all the questions that we had put forward. <laughs> all right. Uh, can you tell? Uh, can you tell me why? Because this seems to be um, a specific thing about a colleague, uh, where she's, um, you know, uh, I, I really don't use the word fat these days, but somebody who's on the heavier side or a plus size, that we call, and she's been specifically. Uh, targeted shift because when you use the word fat and shame i get the impression this has been happening over a period of time multiple times and um, it's very likely again this is a big presumption but it's very likely that this girl uh, is not going to like it nobody wants to be commented repeatedly at the workplace about uh, how one looks and especially when how one looks is not fitting a certain uh, conceived you know Uh, social norms or whatever we call as normal so for me this was straightforward um, uh, a yes that a colleague who's been constantly called out for how she looks a body weight would be a harassment all right all right okay um uh, dr uh, jeshi ma'am do you think uh, the person can be reported for harassment Dr. Jeshri, I believe Dr. Jeshri is traveling, so th there could be a signal issue. Um, so probably an isolated uh, incident where someone is being fat shamed may not uh, have any grounds uh, for it to be reported. But then again, if it's repeated, if it's pervasive, and in such, um, it creates a hostile environment for her. Um, then the person can be reported for harassment is uh, anyone else in the panel before i go ahead with the next two questions uh, i'm going to put the next two questions one after another and then we'll have the discussion because they're somewhat similar so is there someone who uh, would you would uh, anyone like to contribute to this point yes. yeah can i say yes. see uh, fat shaming is um, i would consider it's an harassment because consider the person who is a plus size now if you keep taunting them it causes a lot of depression there's a lot of psychological problem their self esteem goes down yes. and i think it affects their mental and physical health also now there is one group which will say that this can uh, motivate them to lose weight and i think that's far from true does it happen it actually causes more of a, a depression anxiety and you know kind of uh, uh, lowering their self esteem so uh, this should be best avoided Yes, I'm. I'm actually. Um, I'm actually glad that I wasn't called out for this question, and I'm. I'm so glad that even majority of the audience have said uh, uh, this. Uh, you know, is grounds for harassment. Um, I'm going to go with uh, the next question. Doctor A, a male, sends a WhatsApp meme or a joke forward with implicit sexual content to a female colleague. Uh, so, can Doctor A be accused of sexual harassment? uh once the poll is closed uh, so if you could tell me i will move on to the next question and then we can uh, discuss both together because they all ha both have something to do with uh, uh, social media and uh, yeah neeru okay neeru okay so this question 73% the audience has said that yes uh the person can be accused of sexual harassment the next question person x who is a male sends a social media friend request to person y who is a female repeatedly despite it being ignored or rejected 
say three times. Can this be reported as harassment? Both, uh, both these individuals work in the same uh, organization. So while the results for the second uh, question comes, I would like to ask Dr. Jepria, uh, what is your uh, take on these two questions uh, and um, interactions on social media when two people are working in the same place? Hey, uh, what are these two questions? Uh, it's, it's very obvious. Okay, so you said there's an implicit, implicit sexual content in a WhatsApp forward to a female colleague. And then there's enough evidence now. <laughs> this is a case of, you know, enough evidence to report. The other one repeatedly sending a friend request or taunting somebody. It's, it is, uh, it's, there's enough proof to report. If you ask me, can, it, is, it obviously can be reported. No doubt. All right. And what about the second uh, scenario where, uh, say, this person has sent multiple uh, social media friend requests and it's being rejected? Yeah, of course. Yeah, this is. Yeah, this can be reported as well. But uh, wouldn't you say that it's only a friend request? How is it affecting her? Um, see, uh, it depends on her again. Uh, if she's rejecting it, she's saying no. Repeatedly, repeatedly, somebody's messaging her, you know. Then if she's feeling, she's not feeling okay, she mm. can report it. Okay. Dr. Sangeeta, what is your take on both these questions? Um, interactions... Uh, Online interactions. When See, um, uh, the, the, sec the second one question the, where she was said she, there were repeated requests being sent. I thought it was yes. Because you see, uh, depends on the generation of uh, the people we are talking here. Now, if this is a younger generation, we're talking, say, about uh, around 35, 36. What happens is social media has a very different meaning there. Those individuals mainly communicate through social media, unlike, you know, maybe the above 45, where our communication is more or less uh, on, you know, uh, vocal conversations, things. This generation operates through social media. So if somebody is saying no and you keep sending it, I would have thought, okay, this for the other person can be construed as a form of harassment. The first one was a bit more ambiguous, you know, again, is it between colleagues? Is it um, a male colleague of a similar, you know, uh, seniority who's sending a uh, message and they have a friendly relationship and maybe it may not be construed as harassment. So I suppose uh, we repeatedly come back to the thing that it is a very subjective thing and therefore it makes the whole um, area of sexual harassment extremely difficult to grasp to bring somebody to uh, kind of, uh, you know, to um, to be punished or to be taken to law because it's, there's so many things which yeah. affect how uh, the definition of sexual harassment. Correct. It's, it's very ambiguous, right? Dr. Raja, yes. Yeah. I think the first question was quite obvious. I mean, that uh, if, if something's of a very implicit sexual content, if you want to send it to a lady, I think it's going to be harassment. I think that's, uh, and then that's going to be proof as what Dr. J. Priya told. It's just an ample proof that you're just giving it to the law. And I think that is the worst thing that you can do. And it's the most stupidest thing that you can ever do. Any man to a woman, I think that's the most stupidest. So you can even, you can even escape by just telling something and running away. But if you're going to put it in a WhatsApp group, I think that is the most stupidest thing that you can ever do. Regarding the second thing about sending a lot of uh, friend request. Well, you know, when nowadays when you're seeing, uh, if you're too bored, no, so we just keep on sending a lot of friend requests or we send around 50, 60 <laughs> this is friend requests. And next time, another time when we are again bored, we are again doing 50, 60 uh, friend requests. We really don't know whether we are really sending it properly to them or not. That is one thing. <laughs> and the second thing is that if the lady was so, if the lady was uh, didn't at all like that friend request, this could have easily just say block or unfollow something. Some so one thing is there. If it says, don't do it ever again. No? So next time if this fellow tries also, it can go in also. So it just, it just, lady just needs to do that and then the, she just needs to forget him forever. I mean, uh, that one I, I felt was quite uh, ambiguous, uh, and ambiguous, but the first one was quite obvious. And I think, and I think for all the male colleagues, I think the, one, the thing that you need to do is that to be, not to be as stupid as to write something and give it in the form of uh, social media. <laughs> Can I? I'll write. Anjala, can I? Can yeah. I disagree with that? <laughs> yes, sir. JP, yes. Ask us, sir. Doctor, Dr. Raja used some very strong words as, uh, you know, how can you be so stupid as uh, putting things on social media? 
I am arguing the reverse because I am so smart. I know which woman to send these jokes. Only then I will be sending these jokes. Otherwise, I wouldn't be sending this, right? So I, well, the problem is, sir. But the same woman who we thought was was very innocuous will give you a complaint also, sir. Probably. When with the same woman will give you a complaint, and then you you will be really screwed. I think uh, we should never ever send. A, 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 first of all, you shouldn't talk. But even if you talk, you should never send it on social media. So now, with all these questions, we actually have more grounds where one has to be aware of what to do and what not to do. Dr. Jayapriya, sorry. Sula, I just noticed that this Galaxy Note 8. This person is a chairperson of the local complaints yes. committee, Jaipur district. Why don't you take an opinion? I think this person has more ground experience than any of us. Just uh, Dr. Malti Gupta, is it? Dr. Yes. Malti Gupta. Yes. Dr. Malti Gupta, uh, could you? Yeah, yeah. Adam, could you? Yeah, yeah. Could you give us your thought on this? Actually, I couldn't see the the online interactions. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. You're audible. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't uh, actually see the questions on the screen, but uh, um, I think we, we are discussing situations. Yes. As not as per the law. I think we have to discuss the situations as per the act, right? Not as per what I think or what you think or what somebody else thinks. Yes. So, uh, 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 do you uh, do you know something from the law pertaining to this, madam? Yeah. Yeah. No. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yes. That all these all these situations. If the person complains, as long as the person is not complaining, there is no action, right? Right. So if the person complains, now the first complaint is, goes to the internal complaints committee. So we right. understand that every institution has an internal complaints committee. Right. 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 So if the person who is feeling uncomfortable, it's the question of feeling uncomfortable, as somebody has also pointed out here. Right. Then, and then if she feels uncomfortable, she goes and complains. Right. And once there is a complaint, then the committee starts discussing as per the law. Okay. Now, uh, here also, there is a lot of room for, uh, for uh, um, if there is an understanding between the two parties. You know, if they understand that, okay, this has been done and I'm sorry about it. Hmm. If the publicly he, he says that he's sorry about it, he gives it in writing, then it depends on the person on the person who is being affected or sexually harassed. It depends on her to uh, either forgive her, uh, the person or to go and uh, further. She okay. can even go for an FIR. Yes, I'm because going to... Uh, yeah, yes, unless the internal complaints committee decides what is to be done in this case, right? I, I would like to bring Rajat again. Uh, Rajat, uh, <coughs> are, you, are you online? Yes, yes. Yeah, can can I uh, can we have your opinion, please, uh, on these sure. questions? Social media interaction. Sure. So, uh, regarding the second scenario that you mentioned, Manjula, hmm. which is regarding the social media interaction. So, I would like to make it very clear. I mean, uh, at the risk of showing off a little bit of legal knowledge, uh, allow me to in, uh, intervene here. Yes. Basically, yes. Indian Penal Code. There is a particular section 354D of Indian Penal Code, uh, which clearly prohibits any kind of stalking. So we all know what stalking is. Let me uh, make it clear here that the language of the section does not differentiate between the physical stalking or any kind of online stalking. Of course, these laws were uh, made and drafted, uh, you know, ages back. But more and more in the context of time, they have changing meanings. So in today's scenario, I mean, there is even a judgment. Uh, I may not be able to give you the name of the judgment right now, but there is a particular case law where the court actually decided that since the uh, the victim had received the friend request more than three times, uh, she actually said that it was not comfortable for her. It was harassing her mentally. And the court actually granted the order in her favor. So that three uh, times friend request becomes a sort of benchmark. Of course, this is something that will keep changing with time. Uh, you know, women of our country are also becoming tougher and uh, more upfront. They also have a right to say no, and a lot of time they do, as compared to how they were in the past. So this benchmark is the current benchmark. You may say that more than three requests, if you send, there is very good likelihood that you will be that that particular order will be applicable on you. 
So it's very important to be uh, very careful in these scenarios because we all are very tech savvy and uh, social media savvy. So uh, I would uh, I would uh, genuinely like request everybody to just have a look at that particular language of the Section 354D. Uh, there are various instances where uh, people have been booked. So unless there is a very clear exception that unless you are contacting somebody or trying to contact somebody for reasons of preventing any kind of crime or, uh, you know, let's say for any genuine purpose, which is uh, again given under the act, uh, this would amount to stalking. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, Rajat. I'm going to sure. move to the 10th question. Uh, so a first year PG is on rounds with her senior PG in the morning prior to grand rounds. A couple of case sheets are incomplete. Dressings of patients have not been done. The senior PG is livid and he admonishes her severely in the ward in front of patients and nursing staff. Uh, the first year PG is in tears and then later she goes and reports the senior PG to the HOD on grounds of workplace harassment. Do you consider this as harassment? No. Another 10 seconds and we'll... Uh, We'll close the poll. I'd like to bring uh, Dr. Ravi Shankar uh, in for this question, sir. Yeah, I, I do get uh, quite a few complaints like this uh, in the last five years, quite a few. One dictum should be very clear. Never admonish your juniors in front of their juniors. Number two, never admonish them in front of nurses. Number three, never admonish them in front of patients and relatives. Now, this is what has been happening. And um, this is something we've been taught throughout in army life also. I can shout at anybody, but I cannot do it in front of his juniors. There is a counseling room. You can go there. There's a way of telling. So I think this is definitely harassment. The, I mean, the juniors are in tears when you shout at them in front of, and they're seeing the ward has got so many patients, so many nurses, so many uh, paramedical staff. And if you start shouting in front of them, definitely it is harassment. All right. Thank you. Dr. Rajesh Balal, sir. Yeah, I said no, but after listening to sir's uh, very argument, uh, probably I'm leaning towards yes. But I still think it is no, because um, in the first place, uh, as a junior, I should have done my work. Right? And uh, we don't know what the circumstances are. This may or may not have been the first time. Right. Uh, while I agree with sir saying that it should not have been said in the ward, there are many a times when uh, these things have happened and uh, also depends on how the person takes it. I think. If the junior takes it, uh, what would have happened in the reverse? If the junior PG was a male and in tears, what would you have called him? You would have called him a sissy. Right? You have no business to be in tears. You say, you know, last time we went through this, you must be tough. This is part of the course, etc. So I'm not sure this is harassment. All right. Um, if, if I may actually express my opinion, I don't think this is harassment either because I think work needs to be done. But I also agree with Dr. Ravi Shankar in saying that probably there is a way to uh, mm -hmm. admonish or take the person to task. Uh, maybe we should consider doing it privately. Uh, unfortunately, many people uh, tend to do it then and there in the ward. We forget that the patients in the ward, I mean, we, we just see them as patients. Uh, so probably that's why it happens. But uh, great advice there. Uh, just Dr. one thing there. Yes, sir. See, what happens is uh, many a times when you're in a round, the relatives are also there. I mean, in a corporate hospital, it becomes very okay. difficult. They then lodge a complaint with. You're going to be held responsible. So, my humble submission is always do it in the private. It, it, there are ways to do it. Honestly, you don't have to shout in the. It, it's a public place if you're in a ward. If you're in a separate room, even there, the relatives are there. We have to be very, very careful when we are dealing with relatives. Today, all the patients and relatives know their, uh, you know, everything about the patient. They Google and find out. One small mistake from our side can actually boomerang and it can go up to the court. Great, great advice for us there, actually. Uh, great advice there. Um, I'd like, now yeah. we're done with the poll, I would Shalaya's. actually uh, like to ask... Um, Shalaya, Shalaya, uh, one thing, madam, in this... Uh, I think Dr. Thing. Raja wants to say something. Yes, sir. Dr. Raja, yes. I think I, I perfectly agree with uh, Ravi Shankar, sir, in the sense that 
should never ever tell anything bad to your colleague in front of a patient never ever do that but of course to a junior also i think that is also not right and and but then if we need to tell uh, tell younger people especially if i am a man and i have to tell a younger girl then things become very tricky so that means i, I should not there should not be any patient there should not be any junior but then it has to be told in front of an another person because that uh, that uh, because this girl shouldn't be uh, report me for sexual harassment yes that there is an uh, that there is another way around because now there's an there there is one thing where in a lot of ladies feel bad for sexual harassment but there's an another way around because that a lot of men feel afraid of sexual harassment i think right. that is also very very true a lot of us are very very afraid of a lot of uh, many times dr raj i will give you an example of yeah. what how it uh, how what happened when i was a pg Hmm. there was there was one uh, lady cr right a lady house surgeon she was not doing any work at all she was not doing a work at all and then she was just basically linked up to some uh, some politicians and all that stuff and so she would say i cannot come today because i'm going to this per- this person's house i'm not going to come today because i'm going to this person's house each one ministers and they, uh, all she just throw her name and then she won't do her work and everyone were were not feeling happy so the assistant professors were also like you know they were not doing anything to her but then things became so bad that as uh, as a senior pg you couldn't maintain the show there and then one day i knew that this girl if i'm going to talk to her separately would report to me for harassment and so when my assistant professor was there then i told then i admonished her in front of my assistant professor because i knew i'm going to get protected i think that's the way probably you need to do it in front of another person but not a junior or a a patient right again another great tip another great tip for everyone to keep in mind uh, dr rajesh balal uh, i did do you have something to add to this sir uh, to, uh, to what dr raja had to say no no great all right so uh, may i ask you uh, dr rajesh balal sir how how does one go about addressing harassment in the first place sexual workplace harassment anything how does uh, please ignore my slide <laughs> yeah, i think i think we went through this last time i said there yes. is the ide- ideal scenario and what happens in in actual in reality ideal scenario is you must have somebody you can confide to in private and see what happens this okay. is the ideal but what re- in reality happens is many a time the person whom you want to confide to is actually the perpetrator you have a problem against that particular person then you have no other way to go if that is not possible you must be able to bypass this person two things in this one it must be confidential two some visible action must be taken because you can complain and you know what will get around that you know rajesh palal has complained against a particular person and this can be a sort of a benchmark for the next people to have if some concrete action gets taken everybody else gets emboldened but many institutions what happens you shoot the messenger if rajesh palal complains we'll make sure that he or she is um, you know targeted in such a way that nobody else dares complain yes you know in the last last time uh, one dr Am- uh, amulya mentioned about uh, uh, suicide of a particular postgraduate hmm. and uh, things were just brushed under the carpet apparently hmm. so this is reality okay okay dr sangeeta would you have any advice as to how does one go about addressing the harassment in the first place how should one start dr sangeeta uh yeah can you hear me yes yeah see i suppose uh, i think what we discussed last time was something along uh, there should be formal and informal processes to each institution no matter how big or how small you are as long as there are you know employees of more than certain number i don't know what the law states but i would have presumed that um, after the nirbhaya incident Uh, the government came up with that every organization which has more than this number of employees need to have a designated committee with um, both independent or from outside as well within the organization yes. to look into investigate very serious crimes or a serious uh, in yes we we've, we've lost to harassment be yeah. sexual or otherwise sexual harassment 
so these definitely so we are talking about this being at the highest level but i would have thought that it should be a step up approach where every department within a bigger organization should have processes both formal and informal to investigate or to kind of um, look into if there are certain minor or major complaints and it should always be step up you know for something which is uh, maybe considered as a trivial incident we just cannot say it's trivial and brush it aside so there should be a place where the uh, people involved have uh, you know an opportunity to go and discuss and kind of if it needs mediation or to look investigate this in an unbiased way so if it is the hod who's been uh, you know kind of uh, complained against then there should be a system where somebody else who's outside the surgical department who is kind of chairing and looking into it so these are kind of formal processes which definitely need to be there within each organization but also a lot of the work happens informally so we are looking at how do the you know the so like a lot of your cases we're talking about social etiquettes how do we behave what is right what is wrong so we have to look at a lot of role modeling here and so when we talk about informal process how does the head of department behave you know is he somebody who kind of you know doesn't uh, kind of who, who's a good role model the way he talks to his colleagues be it or male or female how does he respond how does he interact during the time of stress and these would be in, in a way subconsciously as well as consciously would be copied by his junior colleagues so there needs to be a lot of role modeling there and also how does the institution behave when there's a gossip for example one of your thing was about discussion happening in a coffee table now these happen in probably all canteens and all cafeteria and some of these things may be minor things but a lot of these gossips do lot of damage to institutions you see over a period of many years when gossip is left unattended it is not addressed you find that it eats like a rot which eats yeah. in the organization culture so what does the how does the organization respond is this an organization the moment it hears something that they are hearing some rumors about something let us address it let it nip it in the bud or does it just brush it aside and how are the people who are considered to be you know the bullies or harasser how are they taken to task is this an organization which is seen to kind of brush it aside or this is an organization which is seen mm -hmm. to kind of respond to it yeah. with uh, whatever with sanctions or whatever you call it so it depends mm -hmm. a lot of things but i think overall it also depends on a lot of training you know now with on a lot of uh, on training sorry a lot of educational training awareness right. so this is right. and this involves not only from doctors so the organization you have you know um, male and female uh, non medical so you have nursing staff you have technicians we have sweepers so what there are similar issues which happen even at their level so there is some kind of you know kind of disagreement sexual harassment or whatever you call it so what, how does the organization respond to this so they need to have a lot of training program desensitize or sensitizing sorry how we need to behave in social and uh, informal settings how do we need to behave in informal right. settings so i think we need to look at it in a very holistic way and obviously we talked about the bystander training as well so yes. people should feel that even if the victim is not complaining the people who are seeing the bullying happening do they feel empowered enough to come and complain on their behalf so i have uh, two things to um, uh, to actually discuss here uh, before i bring in uh, dr japriya uh, to discuss how, um, you know the steps that we one must take in order to address the uh, harassment uh, i would like to ask dr raja dr raja is not here maybe once he is back uh, he had um, something to say about the effect that harassment may have on a bystander so maybe we can discuss that once he is back uh, uh, japriya how does one address harassment can you just take take us through the steps some there's this uh junior who is being harassed sexual or otherwise uh what is the best possible way that you can step by step uh, see first the first step is uh, you know directly tell the perpetrator the person who's harassing you um i discussed about it in the previous session and you know you tell them straight forward that you know this is what you're doing and this is making me uncomfortable please stop doing this so that's the first step to do but like what you said it's easier to say at this at this level at this level of seniority but usually the person is harassed with very junior they'll be scared to talk talk about it they might have you know feelings of guilt and shame and you know they will just want to run away from that place they will not be in a mental position to deal with this unless they have enough support or colleagues you know who are, who are willing to help them in that so first is uh, first step is to make it clear to the perpetrator that you know this is This is unwelcome. First, 
Second is uh, the more important, uh, the legal point of view is to document it somewhere in a notebook or in your phone or somewhere, but not in the workplace document, somewhere personally, what happened, which date, which time, and specific uh, comments were made or specific behavior that made you feel uncomfortable. So it's important to write it down somewhere. And also who were there in that situation? Where did it happen? Who were there? So it is important to document it somewhere for later use. Then the second step is to report it. So the whom to whom should one report to? So um, uh, any organization that has uh, at least 10 employees, 10 or more, uh, it's supposed to have, by law, they're supposed to have an internal complaints committee. So, yeah, many times there is a committee, but uh, the employees are not aware. So, if they are indeed aware of a committee, they can go directly, or many times they can complain to the immediate supervisor, immediate uh, senior in the workplace. Many times this immediate senior it's, it himself is the harasser. One cannot go through him. So it is good to check with the HR if there is a committee or, you know, go to the person above this supervisor, somebody who's above there. And so this is the next step. So first is to try and make it clear to the perpetrator by saying that this is unwelcome. Second is to document that this is what has happened and keep it with yourself. Third is to report it. So, um, so uh, how to report it? So usually, uh, and if it uh, comes to the internal complaints committee, you have to write a written uh, report. Okay, so in the written report, one has to include the following things. The date that it occurs, the timings that it has occurred, the respondent's name, the perpetrator's name, and what working relationship they had. And the description of the incident in a very... Uh, Jatri, if I may uh, interrupt, uh, we will continue with that, but I wanted to, your opinion on... Now, what if the doctor has a complaint against a paramedical staff that he or she is being harassed by a paramedical staff, be it a technician or um, say a nurse? How do they take that up? No, any kind of sexual harassment that any employee, for that matter, the doctor need not be a worker. This doctor can be uh, somebody who's a student who has come for a small internship or somebody who's visiting this place and going and in, in that time, visiting times, this has happened. So the person who's a victim can be a worker, can be a student or can be a visitor to that workplace. So any of these persons can complain about sexual harassment and it could be anybody in that workplace. Need not be senior, need not be junior, need not be anybody. It could be a completely different department. It could be a lift man, could be a security. It could be anybody who is uh, harassing this person. So, so this so is our first step is to take it up with the person concerned, with the harasser himself, if possible, to tell the person that, see, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't like it. And this has got to stop. In case that does not work, or if the person is not comfortable in talking to the person for whatever reason, then I think he or she can take the help of a senior or maybe even the HR staff, like you mentioned, to take it up with that person. And even then, if it does, still does not stop, then they have to lodge an official complaint with the uh, internal complaints committee or the posh committee. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to bring in Dr. Ravi Shankar here. Uh, sir, could you tell us something about the internal complaints um, or the uh, prevention of sexual harassment committee? Uh, in an institution, in an organization, uh, yeah. about the uh, the people who are uh, who sort of uh, form the organization, could you tell us something about that? Yeah. Actually, um, we have a very uh, robust system of uh, internal complaints committee and a sexual harassment committee, and uh, we have in fact sacked a few employees, and um, some instances were on WhatsApp messages only, based on the screenshots. We had to sack a person. The other was uh, molestation and all. Now, when a person makes a complaint, the whole issue is how many of the people actually lodge a complaint? It's, many of them don't. The reason is many doctors don't because they feel that nothing is going to come out of it or it is likely to harm their career. Now, if a complaint is made, there is a provision that you can call both the parties and if the complainant agrees for a reconciliation. There is a clause in this. But that is before the committee actually sits and starts the investigation. Once the investigation starts, even if the complainant says that I want to withdraw, it is not possible. 
that is the law we follow we have a committee of 10 people out of which more than 50 percent or more has to be women the presiding officer is the senior one of the senior most hr person or could be any other person it has to be a lady one of the persons has to have a legal background one has to be a social worker and one has to be an ngo from outside the institute this is the committee we have now within three months the complaint has to be lost and within three months we have to finish it and within 60 days action has to be taken this is the timeline that we follow and um, it works very well the only thing is people have to lodge a complaint that is where the whole system fails because many people feel once they lodge a complaint they're going to it's, it's a long drawn affair then if the perpetuator is a high uh, what i call a high value individual it yeah. becomes a big problem you can understand in corporate hospitals we have some very senior people who bring a lot of business to the hospital there the management and the board also gets uh, withdrawn a little bit but then rules are rules if the complaint is made in writing action has to be taken investigation has to be done and that is how we follow. all right okay uh so there were actually a couple of points that you mentioned here. First of all, the fact that uh, uh, the complaint has to be lodged. So I would like to inform the audience um, in this regard that uh, I mentioned it last week as well. There is uh, an SHWA Act, the Sexual uh, Harassment in the Workplace Act 2013 passed by the government of India, wherein they have mentioned that the complaint is valid um, if lodged within 90 days of it occurring. So time is of the essence here. Uh, Dr. Jepria, could you tell me, say, for example, like Sir mentioned, there are certain uh, doctors who, who may be the perpetrators and who are, uh, who are you know, responsible for bringing in a lot of income to the hospital. And in such cases, it becomes tricky. So what if uh, the, the victim or the, said, the person who is being harassed is uh, not entertained at the institution, say, for example, or is not comfortable taking it up because of the sheer uh, presence of that doctor in that hospital, what are the other avenues by which we can complain? Uh, so we spoke about the internal complaints committee. So similarly, there is a local complaints committee at the district level. So this is headed by a district officer. Usually it's a collector or a sub-collector. We have a chairperson in our uh, audience today. But then uh, the Ministry of Women and Child Development, there is a website. It's called SheBox. SheBox, S-H-E-B-O-X dot N-I-C dot I-N. So there is a, a website, um, the Government of India website. So here you go, there are two icons. One, you click to register a complaint. It's just a very, very simple, it's like a Google form. You know, it has some four or five questions. And you can easily sit in your home, sit in your personal room with your phone and lodge a complaint in a very simple manner. There, there's no hassle about it. And from then on, the things start, the inquiry and other things start. So if your perpetrator is your boss or somebody, somebody very big and your institution, institution is taking it lightly, you, you can very well, uh, in the comforts of your home and your room, you can lodge a complaint. In case you are harassed so much that you're mentally, you know, you're not in a situation, somebody uh, can lodge a complaint on your behalf, uh, like a friend, a relative, or a colleague at the workplace, or even somebody who knows about this with your written consent can lodge a complaint. All right. Right. Uh, thank you. So, uh, Dr. Raja is still not back. Dr. Jayashree is also not with us. So, uh, I would actually like to... I had a question for Dr. Yeah. Ravi Shankar, sir. Yeah. Specifically, Dr. Ravi Shankar, sir, you mentioned about this uh, uh, um, uh, mechanism wherein you deal with complaints like this. I want to ask you the reverse question. Have you had frivolous complaints, sir, targeting the uh, so-called perpetrator? Yeah, see, all complaints don't end up in sacking an individual. Right. There are many which come and many which get uh, uh, resolved because we, in fact, we did that and that person went to the labor court and the labor court sh shot it down because uh, he thought that he's being targeted. But the thing is that if, unless there is some genuine and actual reason for a complaint, uh, which you will not know until you analyze it, that is why right. it takes three months. 
three months is a long period, but then so many witnesses have to be uh, examined. Everything has to be in writing. The whole thing is comes in a big bunch to me. And then within 60 days, I have to take action. So, I mean, not every person who lodges a complaint actually gets the benefit of it. Right. Okay. Okay, that's interesting. I would, uh, just like I did the last week, I would like to bring your attention to this uh, SHWA Act 2013. This is a very detailed document which actually has uh, provisions for everything that we've discussed, including what Dr. Rajesh Pallal asked towards the end, false claims. So if the person thinks that, if, he, if the accused thinks that he is being falsely uh, accused, there is, um, there is a, a manner described uh, in that document wherein uh, he can uh, sort of pursue justice. So this is actually a very important document, very useful one. So I would uh, request you all to maybe go online and just uh, sort of have a look at it. So before we um, open uh, the discussion to the audience, I would like one word from each of the panelists. What do you think we can do to sort of prevent this from happening in the long term? Once it has occurred, okay. But do you think we can prevent this sort of a thing from happening? Um, starting with Dr. Ravi Shankar. Yeah, I think uh, it begins with uh, strong management skills. I mean, that's managers have to be role models. If you have uh, the hierarchy is a pyramidal structure. If from the top bottom, you have a very uh, strong system where people are taught soft skills and every new batch which comes to us, we have induction program, even if it's five students we have, and it is a two day course, we take them through all the legalities, including the Sexual Harassment Act, which you told us. So I think it's it's very important that everybody is on the same frequency in the hospital. And we have to give a very cordial working atmosphere. We have to tell the employees that uh, there is a system here. You don't have to get intimidated. If you have any problem, please give it to us. You can come and meet us, tell verbally, or put it in writing. Once it's in writing, yes, it becomes imperative on our part to take action. And like I said, what we also should do is, people who are leaving us, you should have an exit interview. Those are the people who will actually give you the truth because they are leaving, they don't mind telling you the truth. Those who are still working always fear of intimidation. They fear their career, they fear their future prospects. So I think it is the top management which has to run the institute in the best possible way with having very good managerial skills. That's fantastic, sir. Dr. Rajesh Balan, sir. Yeah, I mean, I may sound a little preachy, but uh, ideally, you know, this change must uh, begin at home. And, you know, I was taking class for ethics for undergraduates. And, uh, you know, I've coined a term. I don't know. I can't remember where I've read it. It's called the mother test. In that, you behave. Every time you make a, have an action, you just think, pause for a minute and think, what would, my, what would my mother think about this? And if you think the answer is yes, go ahead. That's the easiest way, I think. I mean, it's difficult to practice, but that's always, it's always uh, worked for me. I don't know how it works for other people, but it has worked for me. So it must begin from within, I think. Dr. Sangeeta? I think um, I would have um, started with what uh, Dr. Ravi Shankar has said. It uh, very much depends upon the senior management and how they run the show and how they role model. But as a psychiatrist, I would say that the seed of whether somebody is going to be a bully or somebody is going to be bullied is um, planted quite early on in the childhood. So I would say right at home for me. So um, I would uh, request all those people who are parents who are going to be parents is that uh, how you kind of bring up your child, the values you instill in them and you are their best role model. So if you want your child to have the best of the values, then maybe the parents need to be good role uh, model. They need to inculcate the right values right at home and um, the, the kind of, you know, help the children to kind of speak up, you know, we find it within, especially within the Indian, again, I don't want to generalize, but in a lot of our culture, um, we talk about respect and, uh, you know, we should uh, give respect to the parents, we should, but in that whole label of respect, uh, sometimes a lot of other kind of things get done. So you should help the child to have the ability to speak up when it is wrong is being done, when they're uncomfortable, be it a male child or a female child. Uh, but being a female myself, I am a bit more biased. I would say all of those who have young girls, please kind of, you know, make sure that you empower them, give them the right value. 
use and they should never consider that you know it is okay if you are uncomfortable it's okay just brush it aside they, they shouldn't have those kind of values they should have the value of speaking up and you know kind of uh, fighting the system if i may call that that's fantastic thank you dr sangeeta dr japriya see uh, in addition to what uh, the others have said what i notice it okay now it is and by the way today is the marks the 20th year after i joined mbbs so in this past many years the key thing that comes to my mind is i never knew that these things constitute sexual harassment so i didn't have the awareness so i think it's important for us to make people aware that this constitutes sexual harassment and what can be done in a situation like this so if i had if i had known i could have easily navigated those situations there was a lot of struggle and turmoil at various stages of my life so um being a lady myself i i i should have been more aware so i would like to spread awareness that you know these things happen and it's not normal or uh, these are not okay so then uh, empowering women like dr sangeeta said empowering women and telling them that it's okay to call out and to be confident and then to take the perpetrators to task um yeah hold them accountable for their behavior and many times most of the examples that you showed and even otherwise in work environments if a lady calls out these behaviors stop there by and large there are really a small minority of women who are actually has some psychological problems who will continue doing this because when they know a woman is calling out in public they know they have to stop and somebody who is not even aware that this was harassment will suddenly become aware of a situation like that so it is important to create awareness and one of the most important things of this act is about uh, the internal complaints committee of course most of the institutions have this committee is to display in the work environment posters that this is harassment and it's not supposed to be done and what is what if somebody feels harassed so somebody working in a environment should know that i have somebody to ask for help so that awareness should come and uh, uh, like what uh, ravishankar sir said the, it's institutions moral they should take the you know the management has to take it in their hands to say okay this can't occur in my institution so yes yeah that's my opinion thank you so much uh, dr jeffrey to conclude uh, something that again repeated last week um, i think it's very essential that uh, we have uh, in during our mbbs itself that we are taught about the attitude about professionalism about etiquette about how to communicate with our peers with patients uh, our rights and laws uh, because until i actually did until i had to research for this panel i was not aware of so many of these things i wasn't aware that every institution have more than 10 employees have to have a sexual harassment or an internal complaints committee i wasn't aware that uh, uh, so many things that i had actually undergone during my post graduation was uh, i did amount to bullying i was taught to think that it's normal and suck it up finish your course and go on uh, but i'd like to tell you all that no if you are uncomfortable please speak up if you feel something's not normal it definitely is not normal speak to somebody you can trust if not in your department take it to some senior maybe in another another department uh, that would help so to conclude say no to harassment and please say yes to a positive work culture uh dr patta so uh, we've we're done we can open it to the audience and so would you like to say something well I, uh, <laughs> it's been a wonderful discussion i should say that uh, a lot of eye opening for me too because you know i feel guilty of so many of those uh, <laughs> the past which i never realized that uh, you know they have that far reaching consequence i think it's just these sort of a topics will bring awareness i think that is the attempt here i think it's a very well done program and Thank it's so nice to have some real wonderful uh, panelists and uh, very good inputs very well done i think uh, this definitely has some impact on the members of learning general surgery when they go through it thanks thanks for this effort thank you thank you so much sir can we uh, we can uh, open it to the audience yeah, in case certainly. somebody wants to share anybody, something anybody wants to comment is yes. with there any comments in the chat box where well, you can look up uh i think we've discussed most of the comments uh the, there's dr maliti was there uh madam uh, is she is madam still there yes dr maliti do you have something to share something that you'd like to add that might help us uh well i think hello hello yes ma'am yes. can you hear me yes, yes. ma'am yes ma'am 
Okay. Yeah, I think I must congratulate you. It's been a very nice, uh, very well moderated uh, discussion. You. And you should have more of this. Is, is this the last uh, session you're having or you will have oh, one more? This is the second and I think we we have sort of uh, <laughs> completed most of what we wanted to do. We'll come back again sometime. Not, because you have not discussed uh, what happens if the head of the department is uh, the person who's harassing. If the well, complaints is against head of the department, then it has to go to the local complaints committee of the district. So that portion we should have discussed anyway. But uh, uh, okay, ma'am, ma if, uh, yeah, if if there is a place where there are less than ten persons, right? Yeah. Then they don't have an internal complaints committee. Yeah. So the complaints. Could, could you enlighten us, ma'am, in that regard? That was actually yeah, something that we needed to discuss. Please tell us. Yeah, in that situation, the complaint has to go to the local complaints committee again. Okay. Okay. Yeah, about myself, I don't know if you know me. I'm a plastic surgeon, and uh, I'm, I was head of the department here at the SMS Medical College, Jaipur. Lovely, ma'am. Lovely. Yeah. Hello. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. So, um, as as you said, now uh, I graduated in '63 and joined my house job in '64. So, as you must have you can understand that I must have gone through a lot, right? Mm -hmm. And at that time, we were not aware about these things. This law has come recently, just in 2013, 2003. So I think uh, this is the way um, forward for us. Awareness is an absolute must. Yes. That is where we are lacking. Yes. So awareness, and that also has to be a continuing process, like continuing medical education. It has to be a continuing process. Yes, And it has to be at all levels uh, in the institution, right? Uh, from the ward boys, from the class four employees to the heads of the departments. So all people have to be uh, aware of these things. Yes. Particularly yes. women. For sure. Uh, uh, since all Dr. Malti has reminded me, I would actually like to ask, uh, I'm sorry, JP, I forgot. Uh, you had some slides on IPC. I mean, on in case, you know, we take this up and an FIR is lodged. Or could you read it out maybe? Yeah, I, yeah. I just yeah, I have a couple of things more, so I'll sum it up together. Yes, yes. It's about the internal complaints committee. It is can you can you slide share? Sir, I am able to share. There's some privacy setting in my no, no, no. in the in the learning journal side is the first time somebody is not able to share. First ever time. <laughs> So, yeah, I, I found it. <laughs> no, if you can just share huh, yes, it started. It started. It started. Yeah. Okay. I'm hoping she can share, otherwise she'll complain of harassment, sir. <laughs> oh, she <laughs> she's not able to share screen, sir. I shall not say anything more. Can you see? Can you see? Yes, yes, it's visible. Uh, see, uh, this, this, is, uh, this is the she box, she box. Uh, the website where, uh, yeah, okay, I'll go back my other slide so that it's easier. Oh, yeah, so this is what is sexual harassment according to this act. So it is a behavior that is unwelcome sexual in nature it is a subjective experience and it is the impact and not the intent is what matters according to the law and it often occurs in the matrix of power so what is unwelcome a word gesture or act which is uh, unwelcome to the woman who is in receipt of such a behavior so <laughs> it is not any of our opinions it is a it is that what that lady feels and this is the Delhi High Court, uh, you know, uh, what happened in 2010. Uh, it endorses a view that harassment is a subjective experience and the conduct that many men uh, consider unobjectionable may offend many women. And uh, so it's a very subjective thing. Again, the, it is the intent, it is the impact what it has on the person rather than the intent with which something was said or done. So, yeah. So coming to the internal complaints committee, uh, I would like to add that uh, this is um, this committee is supposed to keep everything confidential. Suppose I'm complaining against somebody, I'm called a complainant, and that somebody is called a respondent. That person is not called a harasser until you know they do the inquiry and find out. So it is called a complainant and the respondent. Both the complainant and respondent's identity or address is not revealed to anybody at all. It is very, it's kept very, uh, uh, you know, confidential. So even the course of inquiries and things like that, everything is kept confidential until the end. So that is a very important thing I would like to share. And at the end, 
if it is indeed proven that you know this is and they will take the necessary action it could be you know a transfer it could be uh, you know chucking them out of workplace or reducing their salary or doing something whatever the committee uh, you know recommends and at this point the committee also has a responsibility to help the complainant file an fir so if the complainant chooses to file make it uh, uh, lodge a police complaint this committee will help her to do it so this uh, complainant again can choose not to go to the police as well and you know reconcile within uh, the workplace so this is what i wanted to say about the internal complaints committee of course timeline uh, ravi shankar sir said that you know they supposed to finish the inquiry within 3 months and once they submit a recommendation to the head of the institution the head of the institution has 60 days time to you know make a decision on what to do so that is about it so uh, if you ask me does every sexual harassment amount to an uh, a punishable offense if the lady chooses to file an fir it will become a legal thing so this is the she box uh, website i told so you can see this orange icon uh, to register your complaint and this blue icon to view the status of your complaint so if it is indeed your own hod who is harassing you you don't want to or your icc is not responding you can go straight and this will be handled by the local complaints committee at the district level so yeah this is a timeline is already mentioned so this is the ipc so at various uh, times and is reading the various uh, situations the the acts i don't know much about law but these are the section ipc 354 and 509 uh, deals with this and if you see 354 is an assault or criminal force to woman with intent to outrage her modesty so again uh, i when i read i this word modesty uh, it was not in the indian law until a certain point and uh, they the you know the the law enforcement had to look up in the dictionary to say what actually modesty means so if this happens the the, the person can be imprisoned uh, not less than 1 year and they can extend it up to 5 years this is ipc 354 and the ipc 509 says a word gesture or act intended to insult the modesty of a woman again again under this section if the way, if the perpetrator is punished uh, uh, punished with simple imprisonment imprisonment and it can go up to 3 years and in both these ipcs they can be fined as well in addition to be imprisoned so this is what i would like uh, i'd like to share and uh, yeah i think this is a bit too much excuse me yeah that's about it thanks thanks for the opportunity no thank you so much this is thing about the she box uh, that's very useful information uh, at this point i'd actually like to um, say something so uh, in case any student uh, you know in case they're not able to or in case they complain um say against sexual harassment or something to their hod uh, to their department and if it's not entertained um it does happen uh, i mean it's not hearsay if it's not entertained i would still like to tell you please please do reach out to whoever is willing to listen even if it means you have to listen, uh, speak to the hod of another department even if it means you have to escalate it to the dean even if it means you have to write a formal complaint do escalate it uh, don't uh, sit let it affect you uh, that's the only that that's the one thing that can't hear madam can't hear you oh right uh, can you hear me now yeah yeah yes. yes. Oh right, right. Um, I'm sorry if you didn't. Uh, I don't know if uh, I don't know what. Uh, we have five more minutes, um, Manjula. Yeah, I'm. I'm done, sir. I just wanted to uh, tell everybody that they must try and speak up, uh, if not by themselves, at least with somebody's help. Uh, yes, sir. If somebody from the audience wants to say anything, or somebody else from the panel, it's it's open. I just say one word. Yes, sir. In your first series, uh, somebody said that uh, bullies are got inborn personality defect. i think it's an inborn error of metabolism it is their upbringing as somebody said right from childhood that is where it all begins and over a period of time 
they develop this uh, kind of obsessive compulsive behavior you know they become compulsive bullies they become uh, serial bullies and until it, it it affects their psychology and they feel that until they catch hold of somebody and you know uh, express their inadequacies the work is not done the life is not done so i think we should be careful of such people and uh, it's the responsibility of the institutional head to identify these and as somebody and all of you have said the workplace should be such that it should be very comfortable for the junior most person to be able to reach to the senior most person right right thank you sir uh, manjula can i say something yes ma'am dr malti yeah if uh, if the person is not happy with the decision of the internal complaints committee or if they are not happy with the way that things are being done then they can always approach the local complaints committee directly oh thank you thank you for that madam thank you right uh, so we are uh, i think we done unless somebody from the audience wants to share something sir dr radha krishna ma'am jayanti would you I'm always, I'm always the last person to have a final word. Well, I also belong to the age of Dr. Malti, maybe a little um, younger than her. Um, I, I mean, I went through all these things. I was always the only lady among, say, 52 men. And she's my sister, huh? <laughs> so, uh, 52 among 52 boys, and we had professors who would say that. I still remember saying that if I laugh, I crack a joke. You have to laugh and smile with me. if not uh, thing would get i mean i've gone through all this i've gone through all this both during my md and my dm days and i think ultimately it was my upbringing you know that's why i always felt i always answered no because as an individual though i came across so 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 many situations i think i've stood everything at every point of time and uh, ultimately i think i really realized that it is the individual who has to decide and i used to always have these boys you know my fully post graduate so i always tell them i still remember telling them please always be with me do not leave me alone with this particular person so i think it is a individual the bringing and um, all these things that really mattered i mean of course now i'm quite old but uh, those days it was and we never never even knew as uh, many of you told we never knew that all these actually amounted to sexual harassment in fact when i joined this particular unit i was told i was warned that they said be very careful and but they said it is still the best unit to pass so it was choosing between the two so i think wonderful session uh, wonderful participation uh, i hope now i've also been one of the members for at least two or three um, such sexual harassment uh, cases where i was one of the members to sort it out and we always uh, as my brother also mentioned trying to balance so that it really does not go to the court of law and try to I'm an amicable solution as sorting it out at the ground grassroots level. Thank you very much for the opportunity, Patta. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Nice seeing you. Thank you. So, any more comments from the audience? Can, can I? Yeah. Can I just say one thing? Um, just yes. talking on behalf of uh, the so-called bully or the perpetrator. That sometimes, most of the time, the literature shows the bully himself or herself would have been a victim of being bullied at some time. So even these individuals need help. So uh, maybe it is something to do with their understanding. Maybe it's something to do with their own emotional uh, issues which they sometimes express in this. So I would say, as a psychiatrist, not only should we focus on the victim, but we should also focus on how do we get this. Individual better because this might be somebody who's very important, who's an excellent surgeon, excellent person, but somewhere something has gone wrong. So maybe this individual also needs help, and maybe we need to direct them to the right place. Thank you, thank you. Dr. Vaishnavi, would you want would like to comment, Dr. Vaishnavi? So the no more comments. I think there's been a wonderful discussion, and uh, Mandira, thanks for taking all the effort to. work research on it i think there's a lot of new things you have yourself must have learned in the process everything yes definitely yeah. so thank you for the opportunity sir yeah, and thank you for all the panelists yeah. thank, thank you. you thanks everyone thank you thank, thank you. you we'll thank see you again some of you thank you thank you thanks for the time